Welcome to Rebuilding a Model Steam Plant, Part 19. Fitting the cylinder cladding to the Stuart No. 10V steam engine. Once again there is a specific technique to use when doing this job which makes it easier. As this engine has cylinder drains, these need to be fitted before bending the second half of the cladding sheet. If you don't do this, as you bend the centre part of the cladding sheet which has the two holes in it, it will start to fold rather than bend. In this opening clip I'm showing the engine before I fitted the cladding. Obviously in order to fit the cladding the drains had to be removed and here I'm doing just that. It's very important to make sure that the piece of cladding I'm about to fit is the right way around and not upside down. I used the original piece of brass cladding to verify this. Here's a new piece of cladding and it has sharp edges because I used a guillotine to cut it. I'm about to remove these sharp edges using a needle file. This job is very easy to do because the metal is soft aluminium. The only thing I can say about it is be careful the file doesn't slip and mark the black anodized surface, that would not be good. I'm also reducing the width of this piece of metal very slightly. I'm applying the logic that as the original cladding sheet fitted OK and I've copied the original cladding shape this should also fit. Here I'm testing which way round it has to go. Because the drain cock holes are not precisely in line with each other. If you don't believe me, take a look at the shape of the casting. Neither of the holes for the drain cocks are in the centre of the casting in any way. It should be OK though. You can only work with what you have to work with. I've just cleaned up the edge on this very fine piece of wet or dry sandpaper and now it's time to fit the piece of cladding. But oh no, shock horror, it doesn't fit. There's a very simple explanation for why the cladding doesn't fit. It's because I haven't made a gasket yet for the cylinder cover where it meets the top of the cylinder. What I'm doing here is removing the top cylinder cover for a couple of reasons. One is to make the gasket using the top cylinder cover as a template and doing it this way will give me the opportunity to level off the cladding with the top of the cylinder. you see me doing this very shortly. The first thing to do though is to remove all the dirty oil from the top of the piston and around the cylinder. I haven't yet bolted the cladding in place. I'm holding it in place with my finger and bending the cladding around the cylinder towards the centre. Once I'd bent the cladding halfway around the cylinder, I bolted it to the side of the cylinder. And you can see at one corner it's sticking up a little bit. Don't forget I copied the shape of the original cladding, so that must have also stuck up a little bit too. The original piece of cladding for the S50 steam engine was really well made and very accurately cut and drilled. Unfortunately, this piece of brass that was used as cladding on the 10V wasn't quite so well made. But I'm going to have to work with this, and I'm sure it will be fine when it's all back together. Before bending the cladding at this side, I've fitted the cylinder drain cocks. These hold the centre part of the cladding firmly to the cylinder and stop them bending and kinking. Once again, don't forget, this material I'm working with is very soft indeed. The outer coating, the anodized part, isn't soft, that's quite tough, well, up to a point, but it doesn't take much to damage it. What I'm doing here using a needle file is flattening off the top of the cladding so it sits perfectly level with the cylinder. I'm being very careful not to file the cylinder itself. I'm not worried about any aluminium metal particles falling into the cylinder because this is a steam engine and the minute the first bit of steam gets to it, it condenses to water and will wash it all away. Besides which, before finishing this job, I blew away all the particles with my airline. Here's a piece of brass cladding that I copied, and unfortunately it was not 100%, but it's near enough for rock and roll. There isn't any painting in this episode, just the threat of painting. I need to give the flywheel a second coat before I refit it to the engine. I don't know why, but this buffer beam red never seems to cover very well in one coat. Sometimes when I'm using this paint for its intended purpose, 
I will have to give the buffer beam on a miniature locomotive three coats before it covers evenly. Sorry, there's no painting in this episode. I've already covered the painting of the flywheel once. I don't want to repeat the process. So that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.